us right here. What is the latest on Bosa, Maddie? And are you in my camp? Because I'm, I'm of a believer that that the 49ers and Bosa, um, I think they have had forever and a day to work this out. I think they're very much on the same page. Usually in a holdout situation, something leaks or, hey, you know, he, my guy may want to be traded. or And there's no leaks. And John Lynch, the Niners aren't talking and his side's not talking. And I just think the Niners... Would I, in an ideal world, don't want him to be in Vegas for these, for the Raiders backup offensive linemen to dive at his knees. And I, I just think that he's probably going to sign somewhere between the 15th of August and the 20th of August. And, and that it's not about some 11th hour negotiation, that it's really the Niners just wanting to, knowing that they have a player that works extra, incredibly hard, is always in shape, and just trying to minimize the risk on on Bosa early in camp. What what do you think's going on with Bosa? Yeah, I don't know if that's in their in their thought process. I mean, that's a, a result of him not being here. He's not here to get hurt. And we and we saw that happen his uh his rookie year. Somebody came across and uh hit his ankle and he basically missed all of training camp and um didn't practice in full going into that first game in Tampa and he had a sensational game. Uh, and that was as a rookie. Uh, that was, you know, as a guy who'd never played a snap in the NFL before. So um, I think, you know, to your point, that's right. This is a guy that could show up on September 1 and be just fine for a September 10 game in Pittsburgh. Uh, so that's why I don't think, I mean, uh, this has been characterized as the the world's most congenial um, contract <laughs> holdout right. in, in the history of uh, of business uh, so, I, I mean, I think that's a big part of it. They know that he's not at um, McDonald's eating Big Macs right now. He's training like he always does. He treats his body like a temple. A guy doesn't even eat dessert um, uh, but once a month or, or something like that. So he's going to be fine when he comes in. What I don't get is, I mean, the question is, oh, is he going to beat out Aaron Donald uh, for the, the highest uh, non-quarterback salary? I think the answer is, of course he is. He, you know, he, he has the most recent contract negotiation and he's the reigning defensive player of the years. So to me, it doesn't make sense that we're even at this point. Um, it seems, um, you know, very evident what this contract is going to look like, or at least what they can sort of um, cast it as looking like, which is, you know, he, he beats out uh, Aaron Donald for, highest contract for a defensive player. Uh, it seems very obvious that that's what the end result should be and what is going to be. So my question is, why why the uh, why the delay right now? Um, before we get to the second part of his question about the wide receivers, let's, let's stay on the defensive ends. Um, I had a chance to talk to Chris Kosarek the other day, and, and you did too probably if you uh, threw some questions in towards Kosarek. And – Kasarik is incredible, but he was he was raving about Taco Charlton. He's like, hey, man, the guy just got off the plane, did the physical. I talked to him for five minutes. I said, hey, man, if you're going to make mistakes, make him going fast, play fast, come flying off the ball. Charlton was a former first-round pick by the Cowboys, late first-round pick. He's been in Kansas City, Miami, Dallas, Chicago. Uh, it hasn't worked out. Taco Charlton in two days looks incredible he's beaten guys in the one-on-one -on -one. uh he played at 270 something i think at michigan he's clearly not that he's super lean he looks like 260 the book on him is he's not nasty and tough against the run but in this defense it's all about getting up the field and burning the edge as a pass rusher um taco charlton in in the 11 on 11s and in the individuals uh, the last two days has been phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. W what do you think of the new addition? And then your counterpart at The Athletic, Dave Lombardi, tweeted out this afternoon that Dalen Hayes, the former Notre Dame uh, defensive end, has been added. And I guess you were telling me before we went live that Daryl Johnson, who was just picked up in the offseason from Seattle, uh, that he's going on IR, ending his season. Uh, what do you think of Charlton and what do you think of the latest edition of Dalen Hayes? Yeah, well, you know, it seems like every, every year there's one position that gets the, the injury bug. And so far it's defensive line and, and defensive end really, because 
today, Daryl Johnson was out. Um, Robert Beal wasn't practicing. Austin Bryant hasn't practiced in a long time. So that's the reason why they signed Taco Charlton because they were already light there and they got even lighter with uh, uh, Daryl Johnson getting hurt as well. And, and you know, Joe, Daryl Johnson was a, a third string guy. So they're sort of bringing in more bottom of the roster guys just to sort of be able to get through a practice. But as, as far as Charlton, yeah, it's all been arrow up. I mean, I, I would go back to my fatigue question um, you know, he's got fresh legs. He hasn't been here the first week of camp. And I remember they brought in Robert Kandice last year, um, uh, a little bit into training camp and he came off the street and wow, it was like he was shot out of a cannon. He was a live wire in those first few practices. Um, and then he didn't make the team. So, um, th th those types of guys can fade out just as quickly as they sort of flash. And so uh, that's what I would wonder about with Taco Charlton. But they're, they're so thin at that spot. I mean, Bose is not there. So really, it's just Drake Jackson and uh, Cleveland Farrell and um, Alex Barrett right now, who are sort of the, the, the only guys at defensive end who have been here from the beginning of camp until now and have been healthy throughout. So I think it's just a numbers game there. Um, but, um, yeah, I think Charlton has a, a definite chance to stick because of that. And if he can kind of keep this level and that's the question, can he, can he do that through the end of August? Um, he's got a nice shot. We've talked about so many different things as far as quarterbacks and uh, offensive tackle has been a big debate in the off season, but Hargrave, the addition of Hargrave came at an expense in that a and Willis and Ebukam were not affordable. Those three guys left in free agency. The 49ers pivoted to uh, Cleveland Farrell and Robert Beal in the fifth round out of Georgia in the draft and Austin Bryant and then added Daryl Johnson. And I've just been saying it for the last few weeks that, you know, I, I'm a little nervous, to be completely honest, about their outside pass rush. And I think that the, the kinds of moves that brought in Willis and Amenahue to begin with may need to be explored between now and the cutdown. Um, I asked Kacerik at the uh, coach's presser, I said, you know, will you play? You, you played your twos and threes an awful lot. You used your rotation of depth quite a bit last year. Will you play your ones? a lot more. And he's like, Hey, look, we need our guys to be revved up and ready to roll in the playoffs and down the stretch. And if I burn them out with 70 snaps, um, you know, in week one and throughout the season, they'll, they won't even make it to the finish line. So no way we're going to rotate who, whatever guys we have. So Matt, what do you think? Do the Niners have a, have an issue at defensive end, or do you have more faith than I do in the guys behind Bosa and Drake Jackson? Yeah, I mean it's a great question. Drake Jackson's gotten so much um, pub in the in the off season, uh, but it's still a question mark about whether he can sort of rise to the level of of Samson Ebucom, and and that's what the um, you know the the level is. I mean they they think that they can get better at that opposite spot, and I think Drake Jackson will. My my question is whether that happens this season or not. Um, I, I, I sort of think, and I, we, we might've talked about this in the past. I think that Cleveland Farrell might end up being the starter opposite Bosa, at least early in the season. Um, and then if that were to be the case, then Drake Jackson and, uh, Javon Kinlaw, I think would be the, the big names on that second line that, uh, as you know, Kacerik wants to lean on throughout the season. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's a good question. I mean, uh, I think Jordan Willis was was underrated, underappreciated as a pass rusher. I mean, he's got really good speed, and he really added more of a power move uh, last year. Um, I thought that um, they should have brought him back just because, you know, he's a guy that, um, you know, you know what you're getting. He, he was great on special teams, too. Got a lot of use out of him on game days. But um, he, was, uh, he seemed to be ascendant, uh, sort of kind of figuring things out later in his career. And I thought that started to happen last year and that the 49ers could have taken advantage of that by, by resigning him to another one year deal. They didn't. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a great question. I don't know how much use, uh, or how much, um, um, Robert Beal is, is learning. He hasn't practiced the last, I don't know, four or five practices. 
Uh, so he seems like a, another sort of future pick, a guy that they see as their um, you know third down pass rusher, maybe in years to come. I don't know how much use they're going to get out of him this year. So there are a lot of names on paper, but um, as far as kind of practical guys at D end, um, they're absolutely thin right now. And, and you can see a scenario where they'd be uh, just uh, where they were, if 